extracranial to intracranial high flow bypass for one of the largest cavernous sinus ICA aneurysm. This was largest partially thrombosed aneurysm measuring around 10.5 cm. This patient underwent high flow bypass from external carotid artery to M2 and trapping of the aneurysm. The patient presented to us with sudden visual worsening of the right eye with profuse nasal and oral bleed of 8 days and with a past history of drooping of left eyelid with loss of vision 8 years back. It was advised surgery 8 years back but it was deferred. Examination: She had left eye tosses, mild proptosis and frozen left eye. She had lost vision in both eyes. She had swelling over the left maxilla and it was pulsatile. You can see my finger getting lifted by the underlying pulsation of the aneurysm over the cheek. In this CT angiogram, you can see that aneurysm was extending down to the molar tooth from the cavernous ICA. It was eroding the molar tooth, mandible, maxilla, orbit, petrous bone and clivus. This aneurysm was extending from the ACF base till down to the molar tooth measuring around 10.5 cm. It was eroding all the facial, orbital and cranial base bones. The aneurysm fundus had elevated the temporal lobe and inferior temporal gyrus was lying in line with the inferior frontal gyrus. This aneurysm was partially thrombosed. 30% of the fundus was showing a flow and contrast filling and 70% was thrombosed. This aneurysm had displaced and eroded the clinoid and clinoid was lying in between the fundus of the aneurysm which was filling and the frontal lobe on the lateral side. This patient was offered endoscular treatment but because of financial constraints they deferred endoscular treatment and they chose for surgery. Under general anesthesia in supine position her head was clamped and positioned in elevation, extension and 15 degree medial turn to the opposite side. Painting and draping done for the left upper limb after normal arterial Doppler study for radial artigraft, neck for ECA and ICA, scalp wound opened and STA harvested for bellowed procedure. Simultaneously cardiac surgeon harvested the radial artigraft, temporalis muscle raised and frontotemporal bone exposed. Squamous part of the temporal bone was eroded by the underlying fundus of the aneurysm. Landmarks confirmed by navigation. Left side external carotid artery was exposed for bypass and IC was exposed for trapping of the aneurysm. Key bar hole could not be placed as aneurysm fundus was eroding the spinoid ridge and even the orbit. Bone over the squamous part of the temporal bone and spinoid was drilled to avoid the damage to the fundus of the aneurysm while cutting. Frontotemporal dura exposed and lateral spinoid ridge was removed and medially taken to the base of the clinoid and gradually total craniotectomy done. This step was very much challenging as the fundus which was patent was straddled across the clinoid base. Any error in this step would have had a devastating effect as it had ruptured the fundus of the aneurysm and cladoctum was being done to expose the ICA which was hiding in between the fundus of the aneurysm and even the frontal and temporal lobe which was covered by the clinoid. You can see that this is the clinoid and the ICA there and we have done a complete clinoidectomy so that we can see the complete ICA which we can use for clipping and trapping of the aneurysm. Following this, dura was opened to expose the frontal lobe, temporal lobe and sylvian fissure. Lower part of the dural opening was opened carefully as the fundus of the aneurysm was elevating the middle kind of a subfloor upwards and displacing the temporal lobe up. Gradually, sylvian fissure was opened from lateral to medial by dividing the arachnoid bands between the frontal and temporal lobe. This process exposed the middle cellular artery trunk and IC bifurcation, ICA and laterally up to the MCA bifurcation 
so that we can expose the superior trunk and inferior trunk for further bypass here you can see the m1 origin there and this is the mc bifurcation here at m2 that is the inferior trunk superior trunk and this is the ica here and i am dividing the optico carotid membrane there that is exposing the proximal ica you can see the optic nerve on the medial side there and we come through the optico carotid recess ic is completely exposed and uh, with this you can see that is the a1 this is m1 and this is civilian fissure which has exposed the full length of uh, mca here from bifurcation of ica till the mca bifurcation that is a pcom origin which is uh, is originating from the ventral wall of the ica here is optic chiasma and you can see that we are displacing and uh, dissecting the a1 from the optic chiasma this is the pcom origin which is ventromedial and pcom is traversing medially that is ica there that is the posterior clinoid i am dividing the liliquist membrane to expose the basilar trunk there with this arachnoid dissection we have fully exposed the proximal ica and mobilized it you can see that ica is exposed from the ophthalmic segment down to the ica bifurcation m1 a1 mc bifurcation after exposing these vessels in the neck and brain a tunnel was created between the neck and the skull wound using a chest tube this radial artery was marked you can see the clip end is a brachial end and lower end is the wrist end and it is measuring around 20 centimeters we'll tunnel this from cranial to the neck end and we are passing down that wrist end and brachial end will remain to the brain side you can see this is mc fabrication inferior trunk superior trunk we have chosen inferior trunk so that this is left side and inferior trunk has a less supply to the eloquent region and inferior trunk is being prepared by keeping a rubber seat temporary clip will be applied or the inferior trunk for anastomosing with the radial artery graft that is RAG. Arteriotomy done and anastomosis with radial artery graft computed using 9O ethylon in continuous fashion from and one to the other. of anastomosis, end. temporary clips removed and flow across radial artery graft was confirmed. Now temporary clip applied over the radial artery 2 cm distal to the anastomosis with M2. Now radial artery to the external carotid artery anastomosis was completed using 9O ethylon in intermittent fashion. ICA was ligated. After completion of this anastomosis there was no leak at both the ends and patency of the graft was confirmed using this Doppler here from cranial to the neck end. You can see that is a graft of the radial artery lying over the brain. This is in the neck. We are checking the patency of the graft in the neck. After completion of this successful anastomosis, the aneurysm was trapped by ligating the ICA in the neck and by clipping the ophthal ophthalmic segment of ICA in the cranial side so that the whole flow into the aneurysm segment of ICA is avoided and aneurysm is trapped. After this, around 15 cc of blood was aspirated through the trapped segment of ICA and the fundus of the aneurysm. Post-op CT angiography showed satisfactory flow across the radial artigraft and non-visualization of the whole 10.5 cm aneurysm here. Patient made remarkable post-op recovery with no additional neurological deficits. Her vision in the right eye is gradually improving and she is able to see and count fingers.